I know. So with taxes, oh, if there's nothing else you have to do in life, it's you, if there's no guarantees, you're going to have to pay your taxes and you're going to die. And taxes can be, I feel like for some people, they can be a nightmare. In my case, I have elected to basically have the government take whatever they need to take from me so that I don't owe them any money at the end of the year. I don't know exactly how to translate that into what that means. What I, what I would suggest that you do is that you talk to somebody. If you have a bank account, talk to somebody at your bank, or in my case, I have a credit union, talk to somebody at the bank and ask them some question about, so, hey, how do I approach taxes? Like, what do I need to do at my job so that I can ensure, you know, talk to a financial consultant. That will be great for you. So when you talk to a financial consultant, you can ask them, hey, what do I need to put, you know, on my on my forms at my job so that I can make sure that the government is taking what they, it, it depends on you, right? So some people have it set up where instead of receiving a tax return, they have the government take out less money. So they don't end up with either as large of a tax return, you know, when tax season comes, when filing your taxes comes around, or they end up having to owe the government something. So I want to say it's, I claim single. There's something about claiming again, a financial consultant will be a lot more helpful to you than myself. <laughs> in this case, just kind of as a point of reference, at least in the U S here, the government and state takes about at least. So I live in LA County. And so that's of course in California, in the U S in general, what comes out of my paycheck is a third. A third of my paycheck goes to the state and to the government. That's combined. I don't know if it's like how they split it up. I just know a third of my check is going to the government. All right. And so that's something that else that you put that you want to keep in mind when you're thinking about compensation and everything is that not all that money is going to be your money. All right. Some of that belongs to the government and you're going to have to pay that. Now, moving on to good credit. Good credit is so important. It's so important for a lot of things. And I know Mahi asks, asked specifically about kind of how good credit, um, and it's used in terms of buying a house or buying a car. Now I haven't bought a house just yet. I haven't, um, I'm lease. I'm actually leasing my car right now, but so when it comes to acquiring, you know, things that acquiring things of a high value, you know, a house is going to run you several hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on where you're living at. A car may run you a couple thousand it depends on where you it depend. Again, it depends on, you know, what kind of car you're trying to get and all of that. So good credit and its importance. So the, the maximum credit score that you can get, I have to double check. I want to say it's an 800. I'm going to double check and I will put it somewhere in this video if that's not the case. But I do know there's three institutions that provide you with a credit score. And so what your credit score basically says is, Hey, this person pays off their credit cards to accumulate credit. You have to have a credit card. I started off with a student credit card. And so it was a $500 limit. And I got that, I believe when I was eight, when I was 18 years old and I used that all throughout college and I made sure to pay it off when it was due. If you take nothing else away from this video about credit, pay off your entire balance of your credit card bill when it is due, because here's the thing, every credit card has a minimum. So if you pay that minimum $25, what's happening is the interest that is accrued is going to be accrued on the entire amount. So say for instance, your credit card bill is $500. You pay $25. You pay the minimum at the end of the month. The interest that 10%, sometimes 15, sometimes 20% interest is going to be applied to the entire $500, not just to the 475. I know it seems so tempting to just, Oh, this is all I got to pay. Keep in mind, this is money that you're borrowing. All right. So you got to pay that back when it's due. And it's a lot easier, I think, for this to kind of fall through the cracks because we're not actually seeing the money slipping from our hands, right? It's so easy to just swipe a card and all of a sudden, you know, you can pay for whatever you need to pay for. Now, going back to the particular question with buying a house or buying a car, it's credit, good credit 
It's saying you pay off your bills. When you pay off your bills, then, you know, companies, if you need to get a loan, for instance, typically, if you're buying a, a car, you may buy, you may get an auto loan. If you're buying a house, you're gonna get a mortgage. Both cases are loans. So when you go to the bank and you need to get those loans, they'll run your credit and they'll say, what kind of credit score do you have? The credit score, it will be a determinant in terms of how much money you're going to have to pay per month. The better credit you have, the less money you're gonna pay per, uh, you, the less money you're gonna pay per month. The better credit you have, also, the less interest you're gonna actually have to deal with each month. That is if you don't make a payment, right? So I should mention that too. Interest is only accrued if you are not making your entire payment in full. So if you don't have it, if you know you ain't gonna have it at the end of the month, don't spend it, don't buy it. In fact, some people choose to not even use credit cards until, um, and use debit cards instead because obviously you ain't, you with a debit card you have zero dollars, you got zero dollars. With a credit card you may have like upwards of a thousand dollars and end up accruing all this interest. So anyways, um, good credit is all about can you keep your word? Are you, now, Again, going back to, there was three institutions that I was saying that will run your credit for you. So you'll see like good card, what is it? Creditkarma.com. You should be able to get your credit score at least three times a year for free. Absolutely no charge. I will try to find a link to um, a, what is it? I'll try to find a link to a website that will actually provide you with your credit card, uh, with your credit information. I don't know if I said this early, but to establish credit, you're going, yeah, I did say this. You're going to need a credit card. I will leave a link below to a website that you can go to, to check out your credit. So in my case, I have good credit. I've been building on it. And because of these things that I'm telling you, and because of having parents in my life who have told me what credit is and how it can really mess you up if you don't know what you're doing, it is so easy to mess up your credit and so hard, so hard to get it right back on track. So I would suggest if you are someone who's kind of a little bit iffy about it, don't dive into it too quickly. Again, talk to a financial consultant. Now, I know all of this was probably a little bit overwhelming. There was probably some terms that I use that may not be familiar. I want to suggest this book to you all. It is called Fearlessly Financial. Let me double check. So there's this book called Financially Fearless by Alexa Von Tobel, and I will leave a link to the book below. Essentially, this book is great for if you are someone who is afraid, just if you're someone who wants to be financially smart, who wants to be financially fearless. What I have found in the book in my case is a lot of the things that she talks about, I already pretty much have a good handle on. And so this book is really good for giving you a baseline of seeing where are you at with your finances so that you can see where it is that you need to improve. She touches pretty much on everything that I've talked about as well, talking about retirement, talking about the importance of saving, talking about the importance of good credit. So I'll make sure to link her book below. Again, I know this was a lot of information. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe because I post new videos every week. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave those below. And I will see you all in my next video. Deuces.